over the last couple of days, we heard um, a lot of presentations, the challenges we face as a continent, and yet amidst these challenges, there are opportunities. And one of the opportunities, or two, uh, is the announcement that Africa has won the construction of the world's largest telescope. This is good news because it has implications for job creation, for skills, for economic growth. Because if you look at the downstream effect of this project, Africa starts to gain over $30 billion. This is welcome news. We're also aware that the Africa you know has an initiative to construct trans-African transport corridors, rail and road, from South Africa to Cairo, from Senegal to Kenya, from Nigeria to Algeria. This is also a welcome news. It will open African markets, it will create jobs and opportunities. We also have, you may know, the Inga project to build a dam on the Congo River, the largest in the world that can supply electricity to every village in Africa for over 100 years, to the extent that it will be exported to the Middle East and Europe, because Africa cannot consume all the power to be generated. These are welcome opportunities, but there are challenges. We don't have the skills. We don't have the engineers, the, the astronomers, the scientists. How do we take advantage of these opportunities? Over 40 years ago, African heads of state met and decided they would create a development bank to mobilize resources for the continent's development. African Development Bank was created to mobilize internal and external resources for Africa's development. All the 54 countries of Africa are members. They all contribute to the bank, but this is not enough. So the bank mobilizes external resources from 27 countries. Currently, Turkey is the latest that has applied to be a member of the bank. Last year, we mobilized over $8 billion for Africa's development. But it's not enough. So the question is, we are faced with high unprecedented unemployment situation in Africa. Our youth, our children coming out of universities, of tertiary institutions can't find jobs. And here we have the opportunity to create millions of jobs. How do we do that? Have we started thinking what skills we need to build the world's largest telescope? Are we thinking how to reconfigure our education and training systems to provide or to train the type of skills needed for these opportunities? Are we making the necessary budgetary allocations for institutions to be able to train these students to create jobs, to create, to grow businesses, opportunities for, ne for the next generations? No. Some countries, yes, but most African countries are not. This is the time. We heard two days ago Professor O'Connell's uh, presentation of all the seven steps that, that the world went through to get to where we are, digital, Africa is nowhere. But the potential is there. You go to all the higher institutions across the world and you see African professors, African scientists, African engineers. NASA is you have Africans. So why can't we create the same conditions at home? Ladies and gentlemen, the African Development Bank is your bank. 
you created it so that it can mobilize resources to support your priorities. And that is what the bank does. Most of you are aware how to approach the bank. For those who don't, the same heads of state when they met to create the bank designated the Minister of Finance to be the sole representative of the country on the board of the bank. So, if you are the Minister for Education, you are the Minister for Science and Technology, and you need support, and you think African Development Bank is the institution that can help you, your duty is to convince, some people will say lobby, but I would say advocate, to your Minister of Finance, the reason why he or she should allocate the resources you need to you, and he or she, the Minister of Finance, will send the request to the African Development Bank. Without a letter from the Minister of Finance, we will not be able to respond to your request. It was not the bank that created that conditions, it's the heads of state of all the African countries that were there and signed on that declaration. So your, your request should go through your Minister of Finance. But the Minister of Finance will tell you, listen, maybe this is not a priority. That is where your advocacy skills comes out. You have to make a case. You have to make a case. Unfortunately, the bank cannot make that case for you. You have to make that case. So please, once again, your request has to go to your Minister of Finance. And this is where, from our past experiences, we are encouraging you to also consider African Brains as a partner because it has the convening power. It's been able to bring together ministers, private sector, civil society, academia. So if you are overburdened with your day-to-day -day activities as a minister, there is support. Somebody can help you put together the necessary justification, the necessary advocacy documents that you need to get the request sent to the bank. It's the same thing as the World Bank. You need to send a request. Okay. Now, what are the funding mechanisms available at the bank? The African Development Bank has two main windows where it supports or responds to your request. We have the African Development Group, Bank Group, the ADB window, and then we have the ADF, which is Africa Development Fund window. The ADB, the Africa Development Bank window, is for those countries that we classify them as middle income countries. And mostly in Southern Africa, except uh, Lesotho and Zimbabwe, because Zimbabwe is a different case, all the countries are middle, classified as middle income countries. It's a formula that was agreed to by the uh, I, IFIs, international financial institutions, as the IMF, the World Bank, the AD, Africa Development Bank. So all the countries of Southern Africa have, uh, fall under the middle income country, which means you cannot borrow from the Africa Development Fund window, which is a concessionary uh, window that has a very low interest rate. It has a grace period of 10 years and maturity over 20 years. Honorable Minister from Lesotho, you, it might interest you to know that Lesotho falls under the ADF. Okay? So you, you have an advantage there. Um, for the other countries, it's the ADB. The, the, you borrow almost a bit lower than the commercial rates you get from the bank. But it's not bad because you have the concessionary window of 10 years and repayable over 20 years. So that is, and it's, you, you can't get that from any bank, any commercial bank. You cannot. So it's, it's the two major windows. Then we have the third window, which are trust funds. Uh, trust funds are funds uh, allocated to ADB to manage on behalf of a country. For instance, we have the Korea Trust Fund, we have the India Trust Fund, or the Chinese Trust Fund, the Japanese Trust Fund, the Canadian Trust Fund, and on and we have about 17 trust funds. And they support specific initiatives. 
For instance, someone say, we want to promote gender activities in X number of countries in Africa. Some will say, we want to promote ICT in education. Some will say, we want to promote climate change, green economy. So each trust fund has its requirement. But these are also other sources of funding that are available to member countries. Then we have another window called the middle income country. Because the middle income country is somewhat penalized for not having the concessionary loans, there is a small envelope that is provided to the middle income countries that allows it to undertake certain preliminary studies towards a mega project. So it will take care of the consultancies, the feasibility studies, the short-term training, the procurement of certain basic equipment. So it helps you defray some of the upfront costs. So this, uh, this is the middle income countries uh, fund available to the countries that fall under the MIC, the middle income country group. Then we have special funds. That's the African Water Facility. This fund is, is about more than, I think, 10 billion. is dedicated to working on water issues in Africa. We're currently also setting up the Climate Change Fund, which will also promote green growth and also combat the climate change. And then we have also what we call the Administrative and Budget Fund that supports uh, analytical works like economic research papers and all that. So all these windows are available to you. But again, all these requests will have to come through uh, the Minister of Finance. We have also the private sector window. Last year, we supported up to over 2 billion African uh, uh, enterprises, especially small and medium enterprises. And we still have money available this year to support more African businesses. We're growing African businesses, so that's the private sector window. That's also available, but you will need, I think, um, a business, I think they don't fund less than $10 million proposal. It has to be 10 million and above, because it's a lot of paperwork, and the thing, anything below 10 million, it's, it's, it's a lot of uh, effort needed. So these are the windows or some of the funding mechanisms available at the African Development Bank that is at your disposal. So please, make use of it. Um, you are aware also that every day Africa uh, discovers oil and gas in almost every African country. Um, unfortunately, we don't even have, we counted the last time in Nigeria, you can't get more than 1,000 uh, experts in oil and gas. So we, there is, is also another challenge. Uh, so currently we are supporting Nigeria set up a, a center of excellence in oil and gas. It's been operational for the last two years. And the good thing is that because of the cost involved, we, we sort of, in order to reduce the cost, we're really the university is functioning through the African diaspora. So an African professor who is on sabbatical decides to give six or four weeks of his or her time, comes to teach at the college and, and goes back. And it's amazing. The first group graduated two years ago and according to the scores that obtained, they, were, they surpassed those students at Harvard and MIT. So you could see that it's high quality training with a little bit of innovation, we can do more. The third point I would like to stress, that during this uh, uh, conference, we have had discussions with the private sector, with government, with uh, academia. And because of these opportunities that I alluded to earlier in my, in my speech, we have to get together to start planning of how to mobilize Africa to respond to these opportunities, the SK project, the INGA project, and the Trust Africa Corridor. So we have decided that we will put together a steering committee, a small group of people from the business, from academia, from uh, the government, to start thinking of what needs to be done to respond to the requirements of building this telescope of building the world's largest uh, hydroelectric dam and also for connecting Africa to the roll, rate, roll and rate transportation system. We don't have any names yet, but 
we will be contacting you to maybe ask for your participation, to invite you to some of the meetings for your contributions, and, and we hope you respond favorably. The last thing I would like to uh, bring to your attention is that the African Development Bank, in order to respond effectively to your request, has been decentralizing. We have offices in 30 of the 54 countries, and by next year, uh, the end of next year, we hope to be in every African country. We have also established uh, uh, regional centers. We have two pilot initiatives now, one in Pretoria, South Africa, and the other in Nairobi, Kenya, where we have over 50 staff based there with a director who has the authority to approve any of your requests without having to go to the bank, to the board, to the president, and also all that to make it easier and friendlier and accessible to you as the owners of the bank. Um, I think, John, is there anything I've forgotten? <laughs> Yes, so um, once again, the working group um, is, is going to be very critical. And w from, from, from what we, from our experience, you, th for those of us who are, were in Morocco and in uh, Vic Falls, you know that this is the third meeting that Africa, African Brains is organizing. We've talked a lot. We've presented a lot of papers. We've uh, dissected the problems. Now is the time to move. Now is the time to move, because next time you will not see me. We, we've talked enough. So please, let's move. So that working group is going to be critical. You, you also heard uh, our friends, uh, Mr. Walid, announce an initiative to set up a fund. And we have discussed to challenge the African Development Bank to match those funds, all to support you to improve our education systems. So please, when we call on you, invite you to be a member of the committee, please give it your greatest attention. And thanks once again to Africa Brains for the initiative to bring us together. And personally, if I had to to buy anything, I think I will say Africa Brains should continue to coordinate this kind of initiatives until the day that we've finished building our telescope, we've finished building our dam, and we've finished constructing our Trans-Africa uh, Corridor. Thank you.